Well, good morning again. Hey guys, thank you guys for joining Daily Bread. Uh, Apostle Chastain Rock, and thank you guys again behind all of the scenes with us, my family, everybody that's been involved in our life since God brought me out of my mother's womb. Hey, I'm thankful for all the lessons and all the moments of joy and all the challenges and things that come because God uses everything to make things work together for our good. And so this morning you are receiving uh, the benefits of everything that we learn. And that's a, that's a great thing. And God's blessing your life uh, to receive things. So let's hop in again to what Jesus said, Matthew chapter 24, where he talks about he that endureth to the end shall be saved, calling us to a place where we would know that we are going to be challenged. Okay, because he didn't say everybody's going to be saved. He says, he that endureth to the end. So we want to make sure that you, and you want to make sure that your family, all right, every family, okay, you want to make sure that every person in your family that you can possibly reach, that they live a life that they can endure all the stuff that's coming on the world. And if when you read the scriptures, you'll see what the Holy Spirit said would be coming. And those things, we're in the midst of those things today, all right? Now, today I want you to go with me to 2 Timothy, all right, chapter 4. 2 Timothy, again, we're talking about, uh, again, grow, uh, going the distance, as, you know, as Abraham did with God, he went the distance in everything. I mean, can you imagine him standing here, getting ready to put that knife through his son, and that angel has to speak up in a hurry to hold him back because he's getting ready to put that knife through his son, all right? And so uh, he's going, he's showing you, this is our heritage. He finished things, you know? Whatever God told him to do, he finished that thing, and it, became, it, it brought him into an intimacy with God that God Almighty would call him his friend. <laughs> I'm telling you, that is powerful. All right, now you should be in 2 Timothy by now, chapter 4. This is Paul talking about himself, okay? And we know Paul wrote two-thirds of the New Testament that we read about and we study. There are many other things, but, you know, these things are inscribed by the Holy Spirit, and so we use this. He says this in verse 6. He says, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course, not your course. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Then he says, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them, that's you, that's who we're talking about, okay, also, that love his appearing. What is Paul talking about? Paul is talking about the same thing that Abraham lived, okay? He's talking about going the distance until you finish your course. Now, today, we're going to make some statements about certain things that you need to know in life. I've learned this over the years. The 30-some years we've been in ministry, uh, years before that, you know, I was beginning to, you know, come into the things of God, learning things, getting committed in the things of God. You should always learn to believe what people do, not what they say. Because people say a lot of things around you. And you need to understand that just because they say things do not mean that they're going to do those things. Because guess what? Everybody has an opinion, but it does mean that everybody has a work. Okay? Fruit is always something that's done. In other words, it's something that is completed by the root system in the tree, okay? It's done. When that apple comes forth, what that root system started to doing, it is complete, okay? Just because a tree has leaves on it, and just because there are blossoms, leaves simply mean that there's life in a tree. Blossoms simply mean that there's a possibility of fruit. But it is the actual fruit itself that is done by the root. And this is what God looks for. Okay, he looks for the fruit. All right. Now, one of the things in we can understand from what Paul is writing here is this. The Bible teaches us to give our all, not to give more than your all because you don't have something that you, you, you know, you're above your all. Is you, you don't possess it, so you can't give it. But many people think that when coming to the Lord Jesus Christ, They've got to give, you know, and you got to give stuff that you don't have. No, he never asks you for anything that you don't have, all right? He asks you for what you have, all right? And so I want you to write down these three particular things I'm going to give you this morning. This is going to help you again. We're, we're increasing your faith this week because 
Again, you want to endure. You want to see the Lord Jesus Christ. You want to live, you know, in glory and come back to the earth and reign and rule with our King, our Messiah. You want to be able to do all these things. Well, guess what? Some people want to do those things that are missing the mark because guess what? They're not going the distance. They're not living to go the distance, okay? Not to go to the distance with Jesus, okay? Giving all you have, not more than you have. That's the rule of the Bible. Luke 6, 38 says, give and it shall be given unto you, all right? That's the rule, okay? Not giving more than you have because you can't, it's impossible to give more than you have. And some people get that mixed up in the, in the word of God and they think, well, I gotta give more than this, or I gotta give more. No, you can only give what you have. You can only give what you have. And this is what Paul is saying. He's saying, listen, I fought a good fight, all right? I fought a good fight, I finished my course, I've kept the faith. He couldn't keep anything that he didn't have. He couldn't give anything that he didn't have. He couldn't promise somebody something that he didn't possess, okay? And so God wants us to give what we have. What do you have that you can give, okay? You can give your time, and he didn't say you had to give all 24 hours, but there is time that you should allot and prioritize toward the Lord, okay? The next thing you need to do is this. You need to work with determination, not waiting on destiny. Say what? Please listen to me. Work with determination, not waiting on destiny. You should work today like you've got a hundred years to live. But work like today could be your last day. All right? This is the thought in working. Okay? See, you don't rely on luck. We don't rely on fate. We don't rely on even the destiny of our success. What we really rely on is knowing that there's no time to quit. No time to quit, all right? The third thing that we hop on is quitting when the job is done and not when you're tired. I heard this little story about, you know, when you, when you wrestle a gorilla, okay? To wrestle the gorilla until he's tired, not until you are tired, okay? Only then can you quit when you finish your course. And this is what Paul is telling us. I fought a good fight. I gave what I had, not what I didn't. And he says, I finished my course. I've kept the faith. Are you keeping the faith? You know, faith is what the word of God has revealed to us. That's a big thing that the enemy always tries to get us to substitute something for. He did it with Eve. He tried to do it with Jesus. He's doing it with a lot of people today. He'll get you to substitute something for the word so that you can receive, or, or, or he's lying to you really, so that you can receive something in place of the word. Paul said, henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. In other words, I have did what it takes to go the distance. And I'm asking you today to examine yourself and see what it's going to take for you to finish your course. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you here tomorrow on Daily Bread. Have a great day.